Many people wonder, is a degree needed for a cybersecurity career today? Well, I'm going to help you answer that very question as I just finished my master's in cybersecurity and I'm here to give you the real answers, not the answers the colleges want you to hear. In this video, we are going to cover how much a degree actually helps, what a degree proves, what you'll learn, the shortcomings of a degree, the time commitment, financial burdens, whether the school matters or not, the future of college degrees in cybersecurity, a final verdict to help you make a decision, and at the end, I'm gonna give you a simple flowchart to guide your choice, so make sure you stick around the end to get that flowchart. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for tuning back in and for your continued support. If you're new here, hello, my name is Kaiser Clark. I have been in the cybersecurity field for over seven years now, and I currently work as a full-time penetration tester, also known as an ethical hacker, and I'm here to help you grow your hacking and cybersecurity knowledge. I should probably open this up and put on my wall. There it is. How much does a cybersecurity degree actually help? Well, for starters, about 90% of cybersecurity job postings mention college degrees. Some companies have this as a hard requirement, but I would say most have it as a nice to have and not a need to have. When it comes to cybersecurity job postings, some employers may actually reduce the years of experience required for that position if you have a degree, and higher level degrees may actually reduce the number of years of experience even more. Degrees help you stay competitive as most people in the field have a degree, so if you don't have a degree, you're gonna have to make up for it with experience, certifications, and strong skills. Having a degree helps, but it doesn't guarantee you a job. Not having a degree only hurts you slightly, so if you don't have one, then I wouldn't sweat it too much because there's been plenty of people who have had successful cybersecurity careers without a degree. So what does a degree actually prove? A degree, in my opinion, proves that you can do basic research, write clearly, and form conclusions, a degree also proves that you can commit to something for several years and you can see long-term projects through. A degree also proves that you can take tasks given to you and you can complete them on time. These are valuable skills employers are still looking for in today's job market, so that's why degrees still haven't completely disappeared. If you're getting value out of this video so far, do me a favor and like the video and subscribe for more hacking and cybersecurity content. So what will you actually learn going after a cybersecurity degree? So for starters, you'll become intimately familiar with Microsoft Office and similar professional tools. You also get a basic understanding of the terms, definitions, and frameworks used within cybersecurity. You'll also gain a small amount of hands-on experience with cybersecurity tools. However, even at the master's degree level, I found the coursework to be fairly basic compared to real world experience and certifications. You will also get the opportunity to demonstrate your teamwork and leadership skills. And I say get the opportunity because in my experience, most group projects throughout my bachelor's degree and my master's degree had one or two people doing all the work while the rest of the group didn't really contribute too much. So if you are in this position in a group setting, I would highly recommend taking that leadership position or the group project manager position because those skills that you're going to learn managing a group of classmates absolutely translates into the real world. I highly advise not being the person to sit on the sidelines and let the rest of the group do all the work. Yes, you're going to get the same grade. Yes, you're going to get the same degree, but the skills you learn managing a small team is going to help you throughout your career. And I highly recommend taking those leadership opportunities when they are presented to you. So what are the shortcomings of a degree? So for starters, in my opinion, there's not enough hands-on skills. It's more about theory and writing papers than it is hands-on keyboard. Yes, you're gonna get some projects that are hands-on keyboard, but like I said earlier, they're very basic skills. And in my opinion, at least for my school and for my degrees, there wasn't a lot of, lot of hands-on experience with real cybersecurity tools. Most college projects, in my experience, follow step-by-step -step instructions. This means you won't get a Huge opportunity to practice your creativity or your critical thinking skills. This is why it is essential to be involved with CTF competitions or platforms like Try Hack Me and Hack the Box and doing hands-on certifications to force yourself to think outside the box without being spoon-fed information. Now let's talk about time commitments to earn a degree. So they call a bachelor's degree a four-year degree for a reason and master's degrees 
typically take two years to complete. Obviously, there are some accelerator programs that may allow you to get them a little bit faster, but generally speaking, you're going to be spending multiple years on your degree. For my bachelor's degree, I estimate that I spent about 10 hours a week on average across four years. And if you do the math on that, that is about 2,080 hours. For my master's degree, I estimate that I spent about five hours a week over the span of one year and nine months for a grand total of about 460 hours to earn my master's degree. And if you want to compare that to certifications, for me, I estimate each certification on average takes me about 100 hours of study time. And there's obviously some certifications where I spend very little time with, and there's some certifications where I spend a lot of time with. Take the OSCP, for example, that certification took me 400 hours. But I would say on average, certifications take me about 100 hours to complete each. And in my opinion, my master's degree was much easier to obtain than my bachelor's degree, not only because it was a fraction of the time commitment, but also it was easier in difficulty. You wouldn't think that would be the case, but it was. The grading I felt like was a little more lax, and the projects was only papers, whereas my bachelor's degree, I had quizzes, exams, discussion posts, and papers, whereas my master's degree, no quizzes, no exams, very little discussion posts, and it was just a lot of papers, and I can really establish a workflow because every project was very similar to each other. Bear in mind that I did online college, so I actually never stepped on foot on my college's campus at all. I never attended a lecture, and when I was doing my online classes, I had the freedom and flexibility to really schedule it out how I saw fit. I skipped over a lot of the required readings. I skipped over a lot of the required videos because I already had experience in cybersecurity in the real world, and I had a handful of certifications as I was going through my degree, both my bachelor's and my master's degree. Now, half a year classes for a four-year degree for your bachelor's degree is going to be unrelated to your major those classes really exhausted me those you know because i didn't have experience to lean on so i had to watch the required videos i had to do the required readings but once i got to my third year of college and i started getting into the cybersecurity classes that's when it became really easy for me and that's another reason why i think the master's degree is easier than a bachelor's degree because when you get to your master's degree you're not doing all those extra courses you're not doing a history course you're not doing a math course you're only going to be doing cybersecurity courses. At least that's what it, what it was for my school. So I could really skip over those required readings and those, those videos that uh, teach you the subject. I didn't really need taught a whole bunch because I had real world experience and I had a lot of certifications uh, to lean on and I could really just go straight to the projects and execute the tasks at hand. I say all that because your time commitment will absolutely vary. If you are like me and you have real world experience and some certifications under your belt, then you'll probably be able to skip the readings and skip the lectures and go straight to the projects. However, if you don't have any experience and you don't have certifications, then you're going to have to absolutely read all the required course material. You're going to have to watch the lectures. You may even have to do it multiple times to truly grasp the concepts to pass that exam, to pass that quiz, to write that discussion post, write that paper. There's a lot of information that goes into cybersecurity and you really have to understand it in order to make a good project or pass a pretty difficult exam. Next up, let's talk financial burdens. First and foremost, there's no way to sugarcoat it. Degrees are expensive. A bachelor's degree costs about 40536 on average for online public schools and a master's degree costs about 39,584 on average. Scholarships, grants, and other programs can make college more affordable, and for my military members, you should be using tuition assistance while you are serving, and then once you get out of the military, you should be using your GI Bill for even more education benefits. For me, I was able to get my entire bachelor's degree with tuition assistance while I was active duty, and I even used some of tuition assistance for my master's degree and then once I got out of the military I finished up my master's degree using my GI Bill and I still have a lot of unused GI Bill left to use and I'm probably don't quote me on this but I, I'm thinking about getting a third degree just because I have unused GI Bill left to spend all right let's briefly touch on does the school matter and in my opinion not really but you should still be choosing a school that best fits your needs and you should absolutely make sure that you attend a school 
that is regionally accredited, not nationally accredited. In my opinion, Ivy League and private schools aren't worth the extra money and the hassle it takes to get accepted into those schools. And you should consider schools that attach certifications to the degree program. Schools such as Sands Institute and WGU do that. WGU is Western Governors University. And when you attend those types of schools, you'll be able to not only get your degree, but you'll also get a plethora of certifications along the way. So you're effectively knocking out two birds with one stone. And if I had to do it all over again, I would either go after the SANS degree or attend WGU and get certifications along with the degree. Now I was able to get certifications with my degree, but my degree had the certifications not attached to it. I was doing the degree and the certifications completely separate and that was probably a waste of time honestly if i would have attended a school that combined them i could have had way more free time than i ended up with so uh if i had to do it again i would definitely knock out the two birds to one stone like i said i think it's a good deal and it's definitely worth considering if you are trying to get a degree now let's talk about the future of college degrees in cybersecurity. According to Indeed, employers are becoming less likely to list college degrees in their job postings, and the U.S. federal government actually removed degree requirements for cybersecurity jobs. So it is evident that degrees are becoming less and less important, not only in the cybersecurity industry, but all jobs for the total job market. Now it's time for my final verdict, and I'm going to keep this as simple as I possibly can. Now, I understand that deciding between college and not going to college is very nuanced, and there's a lot of factors at play here. However, in order to keep things simple, I genuinely say that if you can comfortably, and I stress the word comfortably, afford college, then yes, you should be going to college because it does help you stand out. And I would avoid debt at all costs. Do not go into debt for a college degree. That's just my personal opinion. I wouldn't do that. Matter of fact, I, like I said earlier in this video, I got my degree through military tuition assistance and the GI Bill. If it wasn't for military tuition assistance and GI Bill, I would have exactly zero degrees because I don't believe in paying an arm and a leg for that kind of training. I think certifications and hands-on training is much more valuable and a better bang for your buck. That's why I stress the word comfortable in the, if you can comfortably afford a college degree, go ahead and get one. But there's also another thing that you need to consider when it comes to going to college or not going to college. So assuming that you can comfortably afford college, you now need to ask yourself, can you still do certifications and hands-on training? Are you able to commit time to certifications? Are you able to commit time to try hack me and hack the box? If the answer to that is no, then don't get the degree because I personally believe that certifications and platforms like try hack me and hack the box are much more valuable than a college degree and how do i know well i have a wall of certifications behind me and i have two degrees and i am highly ranked in both try hack me and hack the box and i would say that the skills i learned through those certifications and on try hack me and hack the box have come to play way more in my full-time work than my college degree and as promised here is that cybersecurity degree matrix go ahead and take a screenshot of that and use it and share it around as much as you want. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll absolutely love my cybersecurity career planning playlist. All the strategies that you need for success are right here. So make some popcorn, click this playlist, and start binge watching and grow your cybersecurity career today. See you there.